All right. Hi, everybody. Um, while you're getting settled in and uh, logged on to the webinar today, I just wanted to, to welcome you all. Um, this is the CACRO uh, Virtual College Exploration Fair open to all North and South Carolina students. Um, for those of you tuning in, um, your camera and microphone will be off for the presentation. So uh, because of that, make sure that you are familiar with the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. If you have questions for the presenter, um, you can ask those questions in the question and answer box and they will get to you shortly. Um, if you end up you know, missing pieces of the presentation or wanna review some of the things she talked about today, um, just go to cacro.org, that is www.cacrao.org. Within a week's time, it should be posted up there. Um, you can also sign up for more sessions on that same website. All right. Awesome, thanks everyone. I'm gonna get my screen sharing going really quick and then we'll jump in. All right, everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Allison Scheide, and I am the Assistant Director for Transfer Partnerships here in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at the University of South Carolina, Columbia. Uh, so today we're going to talk a little bit about our academic offerings, our admissions process, some a little bit about financial aid, kind of a little bit of everything. Uh, so there's going to be a lot to go over, so I highly recommend that if you are watching live, you know, being able to go back and watch that recording is especially helpful. So we always like to have students ask themselves, what makes a great experience? Um, and also what brings value to your college years? And then why are you interested in the University of South Carolina? So everyone's going to have their own answers to this, but the majority of high school, or not high school students, but college students have this in common. They're looking for a place that challenges them and prepares them, but also somewhere where they feel like they belong. And as for why University of South Carolina, we're hoping that you're going to find answers to that question throughout this presentation as you learn how our university fits within your values, personality, career interests, and location preferences. So we have over 300 degree programs if we count majors, minors, and concentrations. Um, and we have 56 nationally ranked programs between our undergraduate, doctoral, master's, professional programs. Um, and so a lot of really fantastic programs here, but you're also going to get some of the benefits of a smaller school with a 17 to one student to faculty ratio. And you know, another big school perk is that we do have one of the highest research activities out of the Carnegie Foundation's classifications. Um, so there's only 50 schools with that sort of you know ranking of category. Um, so you know, if you're wanting to do research or if you're just wanting that really big school experience, you're definitely going to be able to find it here. So the next several slides are going to highlight some of our most popular majors, um, but instead of listing everything that we're going to have available, we're going to talk about things in groupings based on interest. So just because we have, you know, majors in our school of business doesn't mean that those are the only ways that students can pursue something business related. So for example, maybe students like the financial aspect of business. Um, and so we have some of our most popular business majors, international business, finance, economics, accounting, marketing and our newly redesigned operations and supply chain major, along with others. Um, so we are obviously well known for our Darla Moore School of Business and the International Business Program for undergraduates has held the nation's number one rank for 21 years in a row. But at the University of South Carolina, you don't have to be a business major to feed your passion for innovation and problem solving. You can choose a major in the College of Arts and Sciences. So a student named Josh Pearson, he's now a senior at U of SC, he took the entrepreneurship skills he learned across multiple arts and sciences majors, including economics, French, and political science, to turn his dream of building a global nonprofit into a reality. And if you have a business idea of your own, the proving ground may be the perfect solution. Students pitch their business concepts to a panel of experienced entrepreneurs in a Shark Tank-like chance to win $50,000 in seed money and turn their ideas into reality. And also students who are interested in business, but more in a sport and entertainment or retailing side often find themselves in the College of Hospitality, Retail and Sport Management. So the sport and entertainment management major is the largest of its kind and attracts the attention of big name employers like NASCAR, Free People, the NFL, Ritz Carlton, Kleinfelds and the Olympics. College of Hospitality, Retail and Sport Management students begin interning as early as their first year and all students graduate with a minimum of two internships. We also have a newer digital innovations concentration within our retailing major, which has become very popular with so much online shopping. 
As the Southeast's most comprehensive University of Health Sciences, we also attract many students who are interested in treating others, finding cures, tracking health data, and advocating for those who don't have access to health services. The list here shows many of our majors that capture these interests, like biological sciences, cardiovascular technology, nursing, pharmaceutical sciences, biomedical engineering, public health, and exercise science. Interestingly, we've even had people major or minor in music or history or art and still go on to medical or other professional schools because they were able to fulfill all of the prerequisite courses and follow their personal passion. Our proximity to six major hospitals and hundreds of clinics, medical facilities, medical labs, and research facilities allow our students to get hands-on experience locally before they graduate. Many of, our, many of our students also take part in these experiences outside of the country when it's safe to do so. One of our students shared how she worked alongside the interdisciplinary team of students her freshman year in a pop-up clinic throughout Nicaragua as part of One World Health. Those interested in math and numbers also find themselves in different colleges within the University of South Carolina. Our College of Engineering and Computing is home to more than 30 different programs and degrees, including our relatively new aerospace engineering major, as well as chemical, civil, environmental, mechanical, and computer engineering. Going back to that aerospace engineering, we are actually the only aerospace engineering program in the state of South Carolina, so that's something really exciting. These students are interning at Tesla, Bosch, Vanguard, Boeing, Naval Information Worker Center, Dominion Energy, for example, and doing great things for their employers. Two of our computing and engineering alums formed a company called SpeedTree and won an Academy Award for their 3D environmental graphics used in video games and movies. Think Star Trek, Avatar, and the Avengers. Other students who have this science and math mindset also major in statistics and math and economics within the College of Arts and Sciences, as well as economics within the Darla Moore School of Business. We have students who are interested in careers dedicated to giving back and improving the world and to diving deep into how people think about different cultures. They often think both critically and creatively and enjoy communicating. These students are building our future in politics, education, criminal justice, social work, environmental and marine science, philosophy, global studies, sociology, and public relations. We recently had one student, Julia Fanshell, who studied in governmental policies and processes in Kenya and created a policy paper that continues to be used by its government officials today. Students in our creative arts program enjoy communicating with the world or telling a story through the written word or visual and performing arts. And it's amazing what the, so many of these students go on to do. Some perform with national touring companies or are writers and producers, while others go on to medical school, like I had mentioned earlier. So kind of moving into the admissions requirement process. Um, so our minimum requirement is a 2.25 cumulative GPA on a 4.0 scale for all college level coursework. And some majors do require a bit higher of a GPA, ranging all the way up to a 3.25 for our School of Business. So our minimum GPA, or not GPA, number of credit hours is 30. And so I always say 30 credit hours is like that magic number. Um, once a student hits 30 college credit hours or 45 quarter hours, um, we only are looking at college work at that point. We're not looking at any of the high school information. Um, it's solely just based on the college work. Students with fewer than 30 college credit hours must meet our transfer requirements and our freshman requirements. Um, so at this point, we would require them to send in obviously their college transcripts, but high school transcripts and official SAT or ACT scores. Moving forward, um, we are still deciding what the fate of the standardized test requirement is looking like in, you know, in spite of COVID-19. So for fall 2021, that will still be, um, it's still a to be determined thing. So GPA recalculation. When a student applies, we recalculate their GPA based on all attempts at a course, and those courses must be non-remedial or non-developmental coursework. So that's going to be math courses at college algebra and higher, and English courses at college composition one and higher. So any classes below that college algebra, below that college composition, excuse me, or in a developmental reading course, don't get counted in the GPA calculation because they can't be used towards a degree here. Additionally, if a student has taken a course multiple times, even if their school calculates the GPA without that lower grade, we are actually required to use both attempts at a grade in our GPA calculation. So because of this, the GPA on a student's transcript might not match the recalculated GPA that we are using to determine admissibility. And if a student has taken courses both at a USC campus and a non-USC campus, students have to meet the transfer GPA and the system transfer GPA. Um, so if 
you know, one of these unique situations is something you're finding yourself in, like you did dual enrollment in like at USC Upstate and now you're at Greenville Tech, or if you have retaken multiple classes multiple times and are not quite sure what you need to do, definitely reach out to us. Um, my contact information will be on the screen at the very end and we can kind of walk you through about what to be expecting. So kind of the required things needed to apply. So students will complete the U of SC transfer application, which is on our website. Um, we have a $65 non-refundable application fee or $100 fee for international transfer students. Um, the application fee does not apply if you are already at another University of South Carolina campus currently. Um, if you had attended another USC campus and are no longer attending that, you would do our transfer application. Students can actually upload unofficial transcripts from all of their colleges, um, including dual enrollment when they apply. And this is great because it means you don't have to spend the time and money getting an official transcript to us unless you absolutely need to. Like if you don't have access to an unofficial transcript, um, then obviously you would need to send an official one. But if you have access to an unofficial transcript, being able to upload those when you apply makes the process really fast and a lot more affordable. And so like I had mentioned earlier, if you have less than 30 college credit hours, we need that official high school transcript that shows your senior year coursework and graduation date, as well as the official SAT or ACT scores. That official high school transcript needing the graduation date is something really important to note, especially if you applied with us for freshman admission, uh, because while we might have a high school transcript on file for you, it was submitted during your senior year, most likely, which means you hadn't graduated yet and you don't have grades yet for your senior year courses. So if you are wanting to apply as a transfer student and you did apply as a freshman uh, or for a freshman admission, um, reach out to us and we can check to see what we have on file for you before you go about requesting another one to be sent. Same thing goes with the official SAT or ACT scores. If you think you had sent them to us in the past, just check in before you apply and we can let you know what we have. So completing the application. Uh, the application for transfer admission is actually pretty straightforward. A lot of it is the demographic information and entry term like your name, your address, your email address, things that are pretty simple for you to complete. Students will select two majors on their application um, and then you self-report your current college level hours and your estimated college GPA. We know that that college GPA is likely going to change if you are taking classes, so don't stress too much about it because we are going to still be looking at those transcripts at the end of the day. You'll indicate the number of colleges attended and then you will upload the transcripts that correspond with those colleges. You'll indicate if you have more or less than 30 hours completed. Um, we don't require any essays, letters of recommendation, or resumes. Uh, so there's not a place for those to be uploaded and that's because we don't use them at all. So even if you send one afterwards, um, it's still not going to be used in the evaluation of your application. So I mentioned that you are going to select two majors. Um, so you want to consider the GPA requirements for each major. And if you want to screenshot this page so you can visit that website later, that would be fantastic. Um, so if you are applying for a major that has a like a 2.5 GPA as your first choice, like say broadcast journalism, you want to pick a second choice major that's going to be below that um, because if a student doesn't meet requirements for their first choice major, we automatically consider them for their second choice major. So going back to that broadcast journalism is at a 2.5. Um, you want to make sure that you're not picking a major like sport and entertainment management, which requires a 3.0 as your second choice major. Because if you don't meet requirements for a 2.5 GPA major, you won't meet requirements for a 3.0 GPA major. So I know sometimes that's not always possible, especially if you're picking a major that has a lower GPA requirement like psychology, criminal justice, or sociology, which require that 2.25. But when at all possible, pick a second choice major with the same or lower GPA requirements in your first choice. Always select nursing and business as your first choice major if those are majors you're really interested in. Um, I actually don't think you can pick those as second choice majors. I was testing that out on our spring 2021 application and it didn't even give College of Nursing as an option for a second choice major. And that's because these majors are our most competitive majors on campus. Um, so it wouldn't make sense for it to be anyone's second choice major since it does have such a competitive review process. Transfer students cannot be undeclared. Um, we actually do admit students straight into their majors. Um, unlike some other larger schools like that admit into undeclared then they have to apply to their major. You do the application to your major with us, through us, um, and only a few of the majors on campus require like an application to go into an upper division area. So because students can't be undeclared, you might be thinking, well, I don't know what I want to major in. And that's okay. We still require you to pick a major, but there's a fantastic office on campus called Exploratory Advising that can definitely help with being declared in a major, but not 100% sure if that's the right major for you. So the application timeline. 
Applications are processed in the order in which they are received. So what that means is we do an initial look at the application once it's been received and we generate an application checklist. And so that's going to list everything that we have on file for the, for the student, as well as the things that we are missing from the student. Only applications with all transcripts on files receive decisions though. So even though it gets that initial look, if you don't send us a transcript or don't send us all of your transcripts, we're not gonna be able to make a decision on your application. So for, with the exception of nursing and business, all of our decisions are typically released once we have everything for the student and are able to fully evaluate that application. Nursing and business decisions are released in mid-May for summer and late June for fall. Nursing, but not business, except spring admits, um, and nursing usually releases those decisions in late December or early January. So if you are thinking about applying to the School of Business, um, I always encourage students to wait and apply for summer and fall instead of coming in the spring and assuming that you can change majors really easily. Um, if that's something that you are thinking about and having questions about, definitely get in touch with me. I can explain more about that to you. And so students will receive their admissions portal after they apply, and that's where we're going to have updates. Uh, my contact information will always be in there, but it'll also have a list of all the things that are potentially missing. And then once the student is admitted, it has a list kind of of all of your next steps and all the other things that you may need to be submitting. So dates and deadlines, super important. Uh, if you are interested in applying for spring of 2021, that application is actually still open now until November 1st, and then that's when it will close for the spring semester. If you are interested in summer and fall, those applications will open up on February 1st. Um, and as you can see, May 1 is kind of an important date around here. So May 1st is the application deadline for summer. It's also the application deadline for fall students who are interested in nursing and business. All other majors have a July 1st application date, but obviously the earlier that you are able to apply, the better. Um, just because that gives you a better opportunity to know if you're admitted and get all of your proverbial ducks in a row. Um, and so the reason that nursing and business have that May 1st application deadline is because they are competitive and they do fill up fast. Um, so students can still technically apply to the majors after May 1st. We only guarantee consideration for these majors for students that apply by May 1st. So one of the biggest questions that I always get is, Allison, how's my stuff going to transfer to U of SC? And I say, that's a fantastic question. And I'm glad you're asking that. Um, so on the screen, you will see a screenshot of our course equivalency table. And the course equivalency table is a historical database of every course that has ever been transferred to the university before. So if you are in South Carolina, there's a really good chance that pretty much everything from your school is going to be in the course equivalency table. If you're in North Carolina, depending on your school, there might be a lot in the course equivalency table, but there might also not be. And that's okay, that's really normal for our out-of-state students. Um, and so if you are in a situation where you've taken a course, but it's not on this table, don't panic. A lot of students think, oh my God, it's on the table, it's not gonna transfer, I'm screwed. No, no, no. It just means that no one's ever tried to transfer it here before, and you would be the first. Um, and if that happens, we can go about requesting an evaluation from the Office of the Registrar um, so don't panic if you look at the course equivalency table and nothing's on it. So kind of there's three different ways that courses can appear on this table. Uh, they are a direct match, a, a like an elective, and non-transferable. So as you'll see here, kind of where my mouse is, whoop, the basic accounting, so ACC 100, this is from Midlands Technical College, our local community college here in Columbia. This does not have anything in this course title column over here. So these are the courses from Midlands Tech. These are the courses at USC. And if there's nothing here on the USC column, that means that we can't accept the credit. It would not show up on a student's transcript. Uh, it would not be used towards a U of SC degree. So jumping down to, oh, it didn't seem to populate there, but um, ACC 103, which got cut off here, um, it comes in as ACCT001T. And so like that looks kind of funky. That just means that we accept the course as general transfer credit, but it doesn't exactly match anything that we have here. And so if that happens, the advisor or the student would work with them to determine if it can be used somewhere else in the degree, whether as an elective or um, you know, general elective or a major elective. And then you'll see here these ACC 101s and 102s, those have direct matches to classes here at the University of South Carolina. Um, and so that's a great thing to be looking for, but also don't panic if it comes in as showing us that elective credit. That's really common for courses in history, in English, in political science, 
um, and a lot of the social sciences. The math and science sides tend to be a bit more straightforward, but as we veer into some more of the social sciences um, and humanities, those tend to be a bit more flex, like those are more flexible majors, um, but they may have just wider variety of types of classes, especially when it comes to literature and history. So if something is looking funny in the course of equivalency table, don't immediately rush into a panic. Um, get in touch with me and I'd be more than happy to kind of explain things to you. So jumping into a little bit about financial aid. So our, our Office of Financial Aid kind of talks about the four different types of financial aid, need-based grants, loans, work study on or off campus, and scholarships. Um, so the first three are usually um, come from having your FAFSA filled out and on file with us. And then scholarships are a different variety of things. Um, so unfortunately, we don't have specific merit-based scholarships for transfer students, but there are a lot of other scholarship opportunities for transfer students as well, including um, outside organizations like foundations, civic organizations, churches. Um, sometimes employers may have scholarships for their employees or children of their employees. And then a lot of our academic departments have their own scholarships to give away as well. So once a student is admitted, they can start um, applying for those with their specific department. And one thing I always say is if you're looking at scholarships outside of the USC system, um, start looking early, like start looking now for next fall, but also never pay to search for scholarships. There's a lot of reputable sources out there and they will never charge you to be looking for scholarships. So if you are a resident of South Carolina, if you are receiving one of the state scholarships like the Life Scholarship or Palmetto Fellows, um, those actually can transfer with you provided that you are meeting the uh, minimum renewal requirements. So both of them, like I say, must meet the renewal requirements from the Commission on Higher Education, or CHE as we like to call it in, uh, in higher ed. So the Life Scholarship does transfer automatically, so you don't have to do any extra paperwork to get that to transfer. Um, as long as we have all of your official transcripts on file, everything transfers pretty seamlessly. Keep in mind that the Life Scholarship is only awarded for eight semesters, um, and that includes if you do take a semester off. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to decide on your transferring plans. Palmetto Fellows must also meet the renewal requirements from, from the Commission on Higher Education. Um, there is a transfer form that is required for this scholarship. So always, always, always be checking the website for the Commission on Higher Education, especially for that necessary form. Palmetto Fellows is also only awarded for eight semesters as well. And then for both the Life Scholarship and the Palmetto Fellows Scholarship, there is additional money for students that are in designated science, technology, engineering, and math majors who completed 14 hours of math and science credits in their first year of college work. And so that can include the fall, spring, and summer. It also includes AP, IB, and dual enrollment credit. So if you are meeting those requirements, as well as the renewal requirements from the Commission on Higher Education, there is extra money if you are in one of those specified majors. So the FAFSA is one of the best ways to kind of be applying for student aid. So if you are applying for spring of 2021, you should actually be adding us to this year's FAFSA. Same thing if you are gonna be applying for summer of 2021. If you have fall 2021 in mind, um, you can actually do your FAFSA now for next year. It's great, it opened on October 1st. Um, and doing all of these by April 1st for next fall, so fall of 21 is the ideal time frame since that's when a lot of the need-based aid um, gets awarded at that time. So at studentaid.gov is where you can fill it out. You can actually add multiple schools to your FAFSA and you don't have to be admitted to add a student to their to your FAFSA. I have a lot of students be like, oh, I'm going to wait until I get admitted and then do my FAFSA. Like, no, do your FAFSA now. You think you can have up to like 10 schools on there. Um, so there's no commitment. I always jokingly say that we have more FAFSAs on file for students that didn't come here than students that did. That's just because you can have a lot of schools on there. Um, so it's one thing that you can do now if you're thinking about fall of 2021 to make that application process go a little bit smoother in the spring. I always like to try to be able to give students tasks to spread out throughout the year. And FAFSA is one that you can do now that will just save you time on the back end. So a lot of students ask, you know, when I come here, am I going to be supported? Are there people that are gonna be able to help me? And the answer is a resounding yes. There is a huge population of staff on campus who specifically work with transfer students who are trained on the specific needs and you know, idiosyncrasies of being a transfer student. So there are different ways to help you make connections and get involved in campus life, as well as developing your path towards graduation and beyond. Um, and so that can be things like 
a transfer student specific organization where you get mentored by another transfer student who you know has been through it all and knows what to be expecting um, you know different academic skills you're going to have advisors that are hopefully trained in the specifics of advising transfer students they're working on certifying all of our advisors right now about being a transfer friendly advisor uh, and then different campus resources so the student success center is a great one that i love to talk about they do transfer student um, success consultations and so that can just be helping you navigating campus life like how are you finding all your classes how is it adjusting especially if you're coming from a really small school to being at a really big school what are you getting involved with how are you making the most of your free time you know advancing you know whatever you want to be doing with your future on the academic advising side our transfer students usually have two advising appointments in their first semester um, the first one is usually like right at the start of the semester just to make sure that all your transfer credits are there after orientation and that nothing's missing nothing's you know everything's where it should be um, and then later on in the semester you'll have another meeting with that same advisor kind of going over what you're going to take for the upcoming semester but how this semester is going how are you adjusting how are your classes do you need help with anything um, going back to the student success center they're the office on campus that coordinates our supplemental instruction and tutoring and so supplemental instruction is where the student um, is a peer leader and they take the class alongside you so they've already taken the class once for credit um, and have earned an A in it. And then as a supplemental instruction leader, they sit in the class with you, are listening to that same professor, and then they lead multiple study sessions throughout the week. And then for, I think they have that for about, I don't know, like 30 to 40 classes. And then for the tutoring, they have that for, they advertise about 80 classes, but if there's a class here and that there's not a tutor for, they can definitely try to find one for you. Um, and all of this is free. It's free. You you know, it's part of your tuition and fees, so you don't have to pay extra to get a tutor for any class that may be difficult for you. I'm going to hop back one more slide. And so, um, you know, kind of talking about the developing your path towards graduation and beyond, there's this called an office on campus called the Center for Integrative and Experiential Learning, and they help students create plans specific to your major and your career goals. So they look at things like internships, co-ops, uh, research projects, uh, clubs, professional organizations, volunteer work, and they kind of help you build that resume and they help you get those experiences and that provide really great examples when you're in an interview and an employer says, tell me about a time when. Um, the Center for Integrative and Experiential Learning is going to help you get those experiences so you don't have to like sit there and think about like, oh God, when did I do that? You're already going to have the answer. You've already done it. Um, so all of our majors have some type of internship or a resume building component to it. Um, sometimes they call it a beyond the classroom experience. And each college or school has staff dedicated to finding internships specific to each major. And so just in our College of Engineering and Computing alone, there are four internship directors. And our College of Arts and Sciences is a brand new center called the Student Excellence Collaborative or the SEC that connects all of its students to internships um, with about 75,000 different alumni around the world. So a lot of great ways to make sure that you are getting the most out of your undergraduate experience as you move into your career. If you're considering a pre-professional track like medical, physical therapy, dental, or vet school, as well as other health related professions or law school, our Office of Pre-Professional Advising can help with job shadowing opportunities, practice tests, mock interviews, and just the entire application process, especially law school and med school, they've got some pretty hefty applications out there. Um, and they've got advisors who are pros and know exactly what to do um, and what timeline you need to be on in order to be, you know, progressing into those programs at the, you know, in the semester that you want to be. All right. And so I'm going to kind of wrap things up and then I'll answer some questions. Um, so I'm going to end by saying, there's a lot more to the University of South Carolina than you might realize. In fact, a former student once shared that as a third generation Gamecock and native Colombian, I thought that I knew what to expect at the University of South Carolina. Four years later, I'm still finding new opportunities. So, you know, there's a lot to explore here, a lot to love here. And, you know, we would love to be able to answer more questions about what it's like to be a Gamecock. Um, if you are in the mood for a tour, we do have um, limited in-person tour capabilities right now. These tours don't go into any of our buildings. They are all strictly outside. And those are limited to three students and two guests. So nine total guests per one student ambassador giving the tour. 
if you are not able to or not comfortable coming for an in-person tour, we do have virtual tours led five days a week live by our student ambassadors. Um, and it's a very selective process to be a student ambassador. We don't, we don't just let anyone give campus tours around here. Um, so they give some fantastic tours. Um, virtually, we have them broken up into three or four different types of tours based on um, the topic, like one is more on the academic buildings, one is more on like the transportation and like our student life buildings. So there's a lot to learn from their different campus tours. So some different ways to contact us. So if you are in the mood for chatting on the phone, our phones are staffed um, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5, um, excluding holidays if the university is closed. Um, keep in mind, we are all still working remotely for the most part. So sometimes the phones um, get a little funky on us, but that's okay. Um, if that happens, just call back and we'd be more than happy to help you out. Email is one of the best ways to get in touch with me specifically. Um, so I am the main staff member behind ADM transfer at mailbox.sc.edu. So if you have questions, that's a great place to direct those to, and I'd be more than happy to do my best to answer those. If it's not something I can answer over email, I would love to chat one-on-one -on -one, um, over the phone, over Zoom, actually on our website, sc.edu slash admissions. Um, there is a link where you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me, and I'd be more than happy to talk with you about credit transfer, about you know just different things about the University of South Carolina. Um, I used to be an advisor for students changing majors, um, so I'm actually pretty well trained on all of the majors that we have here at U of SC, um, you know, and what they take and what you can be expecting with them. And then you should also give us a follow on social media if you're so inclined. Actually, on Instagram, we've just started our Major Monday series. Today was the first day, so if you hop in there, we have a student in our biochemistry program doing an Instagram takeover as she talks about why she picked her major and all the great things that she gets to do with that. All right, I'm going to hop in the Q&A for right now. It doesn't look like there's any questions right now. Um, if you do have questions for me, feel free to pop those in there. I'd be more than happy to answer them. All right. Well, as you guys are thinking of some more questions, I'm going to, you know, try to think of some of the questions that I get asked about a lot. Um, and so a lot of times I get asked about our school of business and our college of nursing. And so these are majors that I had mentioned earlier that have a competitive application process um, and do release decisions a bit later. And so when I say they have a competitive process, that means that meeting the minimum requirements for these majors does not guarantee admission. Um, so for our college of nursing, our minimum GPA requirement is a 3.0 and students cannot have below a C in any science or nursing courses, um, that automatically disqualifies them from consideration just because of some of the accreditation standards they have to hold their program to. So meeting that minimum requirement for our College of Nursing does not guarantee admission. Um, and then with our School of Business, the minimum GPA that they consider is a 3.25, and they also require a C or better in calculus. And I get asked often, is that calculus requirement required? Yes, the calculus requirement is required. Um, so I've seen students with fantastic GPAs get denied because they haven't had the calculus requirement. So I always like to shout that from the rooftops that like, yes, you need calculus in order to be admitted to our school of business. Um, just because I hate to see students apply and not get admitted because they didn't have the calculus requirement. There's also a few other majors that do have calculus requirements, and that's going to be our economics major in our College of Arts and Sciences. And then also in Arts and Sciences is going to be math and statistics. And then all of our engineering majors require calculus as well. Um, so in our College of Engineering and Computing, there are three majors that actually don't require calculus, and that's computer science, computer information systems, and integrated information technology. All the rest in that college do require a grade of C or better in Calculus One in order to be admitted, just because there's a lot of calculus in these majors, and they want to make sure that students are able to handle all of that math that's getting thrown at them. And then our music majors and our dance majors have to pass an audition in order to be admitted. Um, so even if they meet the minimum GPA requirements, they still have to pass that audition in order to be admitted into the major. Great. Any other questions? We do have almost 10 minutes left. I'm more than happy. You can ask me almost anything and I will do my best to answer that.
All right. Well, I know that was a lot of information. And I also know that transfer students often have questions that are a lot more specific to their unique situations that can't always be covered in a one size fits all presentation. Um, so that's why I highly suggest reaching out via email, via phone, um, or scheduling one of those one on one meetings with me. And I'd be more than happy to talk about your unique situation and what your pathway to the University of South Carolina can look like. All right, I think that wraps it up for me. Awesome. So those of you still here listening along, um, just wanted to share a, a last few things. Um, there'll be a quick survey, four questions at the end of this, just to let us know how we can improve. Um, you can sign up for more of these sessions if you were interested in um, you know, University of South Carolina or other colleges as well, um, or just different things about the transfer process you can go to www.cacro.org, that's C-A-C-R-A-O, and the recording of the session will also be available within one week. So you should be able to find all the information that was just presented to you um, on that website as well. All right, thank you so much for coming today.